Now, time for our My 70s guest, Glenn Matlock. He made his name as part of the Sex Pistols in the 70s, but his short tenure in the band is only a small part of his musical career. He had a big hand in writing much of the music on the Sex Pistols album and was sidelined by the arrival of Sid Vicious. He wasn't really getting on with Johnny Rotten, I don't think, and Malcolm McLaren said, we had to fire him because he likes the Beatles, which was a complete load of nonsense. But Malcolm McLaren knew how to do a quote and get some publicity. After he left uh, the Pistols in 77, he formed the Rich Kids with mid and went on to collaborate with the likes of Tom Robinson, Mick Ronson, Iggy Pop and The Damned, to name but a few. He's recently released a solo album called Consequences Coming. And if that wasn't enough, he's currently on tour playing bass with Blondie. He'll be on the Pyramid stage with them at Glastonbury later on today. I spoke to Glenn early this week and we'll hear the chat after this from the Pistols. Johnny walking on Sounds of the 70s, a very good afternoon to the original bass player of the Sex Pistols, Glenn Matlock. Uh, Glenn, how are you doing? Not so bad, Johnny. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. You started uh, playing bass for Blondie, was it last year, on their tour in America? Yeah, yeah. I was at home in my kitchen doing some cooking, and um, the phone went, and it was clam, and I was right in the middle of finishing off my risotto, and I wasn't going to answer the phone, and I thought, oh, right, here's clam. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm cooking. He <laughs> said, no, what are you doing soon? He said, we started rehearsing for our tour, and it's not working out with Lee, their bass player, who's very good and a great guy, but for some reason it wasn't. He said, can you come over to New York? And I said, when? What, like a couple of months? He said, no, next Tuesday. And I was like, ah. <laughs> so I went over and had a meeting with him. And the next thing, we come back here. And the first gig I did with them is at SCC in Glasgow. 15,000 people and like I've got all notes and stuff. But it was good, it worked. It was kind of cool. So they invited me to do the rest of the shows with them. And it seems to work, you know. I enjoy playing with Clown. I've played with him for many years over different airbrain projects and things. And in fact, he plays on a couple of tracks on my new album as well. And, you know, Bondi, they've had such big hits. And they, everything they've done is kind of pushing the envelope. But, you know, they're kind of a little bit arty somehow, which with my art school background, I can dig. It's fun, you know. What's your favourite Blondie track? I don't know, they're all pretty good, you know. The Sunday Girl, Dreaming, Denny Denny. You know, I met them originally in the 70s when I did a one-off gig with Sid Vicious at the um, Electric Ballroom in Camden. And what was good about Blondie was, like, normally everybody, when you got a night off, everybody slopes off in different directions. And they all came out to see the show as a band. And that's when I met Clem for the first time, and, and Debbie and, and Chris. So there was something about that, that there was a kind of a band bon homie, which maybe you don't get in other groups. But they had a whole kind of panoply of top toe-tapping tunes. Well, yeah, they're all good. <laughs> Let's do one here. Yeah. That's Blondie and Dreaming, and the current bass player with Blondie is Glenn Matlock. Um, I'm quite interested to hear you saying you played a gig with Sid Vicious. So there were no hard feelings then that he took your place in the Pistols? No, my time had been and gone by that time. I wasn't happy with the way some of the things were going on and stuff. And then me and him were supposed to be um, our enemies, and we weren't really. I like that thing in a far show, you know, Harry Antill and Paul Whitehouse, and there's two blokes sitting around in a pub. And Harry Antill says, well, if that's what you want, that's what's going to happen. And I could see exactly what would happen if they got Sid in the band. And it did. So I kind of had the last half, really. But I didn't dislike Sid. I thought he was a likeable nitwit, really, to be honest. But he could sing. And he was a good singer. But he was, didn't have the gift of the gab lyrically, like Rotten. But he was kind of possibly a punk version of Elvis, you know, in the way that Elvis was very good at interpreting other people's songs, but I don't know that Elvis particularly wrote any lyrics at all. And Sid was like that, and we just did a gig for a laugh. And we decided on the Monday he was going to do it, and then he sold out the electric ball about a Friday. It was just a seat of your pants kind of in the spirit of punk thing, really. It was for once and for one night only, and that, that was it. 
Now, you wrote at least eight of the ten songs on the Sex Pistols album. That's quite a contribution you made in terms of songwriting. In my publishing kind of contract, there's 13 songs that are Pistols related. Three of those songs are the first three singles. Now, I didn't write all of them, but I wrote a lot of the good bits on it. But then Pretty Vacant, that's my lyric as well. So, there you go. How's about that, then? (laughs) Well, here's one that you wrote and you played bass on and sang backing vocals. Here are the Sex Pistols. Anarchy in the UK, and the guy who wrote the song, played bass and did backing vocals, is our guest this afternoon, Glenn Matlock. So, you did the Isle of Wight the other night with Blondie. How was that show? It went well. It went very good. It was a shorter set. You only get to do an hour at these things. I mean, Debbie's really on form. They kind of got a newish guitarist. Chris Stein can no longer... Tour. They got a new guy called Andy Blacktree, who was fantastic. It's kind of like regenerated the band. And are you looking forward to playing at Glastonbury? Yeah, you know, it's a gig. We've been really busy this year already. In Miami, we went to Bogota in Colombia, played in Mexico City. We was in California, we did um, Coachella. Nile Rogers got up and did a couple of songs with us, so that was a blast. You know, it's another gig, but it is Glastonbury. I'm quite excited because on the stage we're on, just before us, is Cat Stevens. Now, I've never seen Cat Stevens live, but I did see him a couple of years back in my local garden centre, and I was going to introduce myself to him, but his phone rang, and he was deep in conversation on his mobile for about half an hour, and I thought, oh, I'll go to B&Q and get the plants a bit cheaper instead. (laughs) But, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Cat Stevens. (laughs) And apart from all this work with uh, Blondie and other things, you've made a new album, Consequences Coming. Yes. I started making it just before lockdown happened, and I put it on the back burner for a while, and then I kind of revisited it. You know, it's out. I've had nothing but good reviews for it. I'm proud of it. (laughs) It's something for everybody. Well, it's called Consequences Coming by Glenn Matlock, who will also be playing... At Dog Day Afternoon, and that'll be uh, on the 1st of July with Iggy Pop. That's right, yeah. And, and Steve and Paul, who have generation sex with Billy Idol and all that, and they're quite funny is they're going on before Blondie, so I'll have a little giggle about that. But I'm sure tea, <laughs> tea and biscuits will be taken backstage. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Glenn, thanks for your time this afternoon. All the best. All right, Charlie, thanks. Cheers now.